And hello, good afternoon. I'm Casey Durango, Go Keto with Casey, where I like to talk about how I've lost 97.4 pounds since starting the ketogenic protocol, how you may be able to lose weight, improve your health, and regain control of your life. Grand grandmother clock is chiming, so it must be time to talk about keto. Thank you for allowing me to be part of your Saturday. And let's just jump right on in, shall we? And please, if uh, someone can let me know, thank you very much. Scott Ramsey says, I can hear you in North Texas. Thank you. <laughs> it's always a question. Um, and if we have technical issues, we'll just deal with them because that's life. So today's topic is consistency and staying, quote, on the wagon. I actually wrote a blog post about this as well, because in my Patreon support group, I have a, a, a spreadsheet where people can enter topic suggestions for the snippets um, that I do every weekday. And, you know, this is, it comes up uh, enough. And this person actually used the phrase, I keep falling off the wagon. You know, I'll be good. I, and this person knew that keto worked for them. They'd lost however many pounds and were happy and then, Kind of got lackadaisical about it, and now trying again. The the person shared that they get ten days into it and they fall off the wagon and have to start all over again. And asked for pointers on how to stay on the wagon, how to keep going, how to remain consistent. So this put me of a mind where, and and I do believe that words are very important. The words that people say about us to us, but mostly the words we use to and about ourselves, whether we say them out loud or we think them. So I'd been talking to a friend and they had been talking in a setting where a psychiatrist was speaking to a group. And the phrase falling off the wagon came up. And this psychiatrist shared, you know, that is a really passive voice, falling off the wagon. He said, you know, you don't fall off the wagon when it comes to trying to change your behavior, right? You, you decide to get off the wagon. Some people dive off the wagon. But it's still our action, our behavior, our choice, right? So I thought, well, you know, that's, that's very true. And I, I do try to use direct language. I'm a fairly direct person. But we can tend to use passive language when we're talking to ourselves. And why would we do that? Because it helps relieve us of responsibility. Now, I, I fully understand that every time I talk, some people give me the thumbs down or they unsubscribe or they say you just don't get it, you've never had this problem or whatever. I had the problem. You may look at my blog and look at my before photos and I was morbidly obese for 30 years. I had the problem and I made every, every excuse and every joke, frankly, about my condition that I could. We've all heard them. We've all said them probably. I was doing great and then life happened. Life always happens. There's not a time when life doesn't happen. It is wonderful the day that you can look back and say, wow, nothing dramatic <laughs> happened. It was a nice boring day and the sun was shining and everything was easy. Those are not every day. Or I would make jokes that, um, Oh, no, M&Ms are medicinal. They even come in pill form. Or I break the cookies in half. The calories fall out that way. Or I'll start tomorrow. Or I will start Monday. Or I will make changes right after my birthday. Or fill in the blank. And I would say I fell off the wagon. Or that life happened to me. Or that... I was doing great, and then something derailed me. No, that's that's relieving my. Oh, sorry, Jack. You okay? Well, Jack in the background. I apologize. Say excuse me. There is not much 
we can control. Jack, you're going to have to go to bed because I can't go open the door for you. Go to bed. Go to bed. He's bummed. Do you have pets or children who want your attention when they know you're doing something else, like going to the bathroom or on the telephone or making a live stream video? What was I saying? Oh, dear. Okay, so life doesn't derail us. Uh, and it's it, any more than it does anyone else. We can't control most of what goes on around us. We never have been able to. But we can control our behavior, barring some neurological situation. We can control our behavior. And like it or not, one of the most basic things we can control is, is what we eat. We are not compelled. We might feel compelled. We like, might tell ourselves that we are compelled. We might say, I am powerless in the face of a basket of Doritos or tortilla chips, which is what I used to say. I would say, I cannot resist tortilla chips. I'd say it out loud and say it to myself. I'd say it, you know. The thing was, I couldn't until I did. And it was really kind of crazy to say that I was powerless in the face of tortilla chips or pizza or anything else. Like everyone else here, I've seen some things and experienced some things in my life. Some of them the opposite of good and happy. I've had terrifying medical diagnoses. I've buried loved ones. I have found a loved one dead. I have had my heart broken. I've been disappointed by people. I've been disappointed in myself. I fell 30 feet off of a ladder. I'm here to tell the tale. Really? I'm powerless in the face of tortilla chips? Okay, so I'm wearing my t-shirt today. I'm stronger than a cookie. I'm stronger than a cookie, and I can stay on the daggone wagon if I choose to. Let's just say it. If you decide to eat food that doesn't serve you well, and let me back up. The, the ketogenic protocol, as I learned it and as, of, as I have followed it all this time, keep your carbohydrate intake to 20 grams or fewer a day. Total carbs, not net. If it's not on page four, link below. Don't eat it. Don't eat if you're not hungry. Stop when you're satiated. 100% the last two things are the hardest. Don't eat if you're not hungry and stop when you're satiated. And you don't even need a food list. Eat fatty sources of protein and full fat dairy, not in unlimited quantities and non-starchy vegetables, about a cup a day max and two cups of leafy greens a day max, meaning you don't have to have any if you don't want. That's what it is. So if I choose to, I don't know, if I choose to have M&Ms or I choose to make the foolish decision to eat a prepackaged product with the word keto on it. Come on, man. It's not keto. It's, uh, it's almost impossible to make a shelf stable item in packaging keto friendly. Green beans in a, in a can. Okay. Keto friendly. So-called keto clusters or keto munchies or keto cookies or keto pie or keto... No. Anyway, but if I make the choice to eat those, that was my choice. I wasn't hoodwinked. I didn't fall off the wagon. I wasn't pushed off the wagon. I decided to eat those things. Sounds harsh. But let's pretend we're talking to a friend, a loved one, a child, a family member who continues to make decisions that they know are self-destructive. Do we say, ah, just keep on. That seems to be working for you really well. Well, we could, but that would sound very sarcastic and snarky. No, we would hope to point out to them the first thing you have to do is stop the behavior. You don't have to have a big psychoanalysis about why you're doing the behavior. Stop the behavior. Maybe you figure things out later. I always like to liken it to triage. 
you know, in the emergency room, they don't go straight for cosmetic surgery. They stop the bleeding. Actually, the first thing they do is they pull the knife out of your thigh. Then they stop the bleeding. Then they make sure you're stable. And then they get you recuperated. And then maybe a cosmetic surgeon comes back and makes this scar look pretty. Stop the bleeding. Lay off the carbs. Don't think about doing it for the rest of your life. How do you stay on the wagon? Don't think that the, that the journey's going to go on for six million miles. Stay on the wagon for now. Set a timer if you must. I may eat carbs tomorrow, but I'm not going to eat them today. And I won't die if I don't eat carbs. And then tomorrow you say the same thing. It's behavior. And our behavior is our choice. I'm reading The Lives of the Stoics, or Lives of the Stoics, by Ryan Holiday. The Stoics was a, a group of philosophers in Greece and Rome. It spanned a few hundred years. But there were variations on it. But Stoics pretty much believe in self-responsibility. And the, the Stoic I'm reading about right now Posidonius, I was saying it was Publius Rufus. I was saying it was Publius, Publius Rutilius Rufus. No, but it was Posidonius. That's hard to you know remember all these names. Anyway, he wrote, it is kind of uh, arrogant of us to think that we can control all these outside forces that are going on. Nature, politics, Greed, disease, who do we think we are anyway? The only thing we can control is our behavior. And what goes on between our ears is what's most important. The phrase, we are given two ears and one mouth for a reason, was supposedly first quoted, uh, written by Zeno, the first Stoic. All of that is to say, this is nothing new. We have to stop feeling victimized. I did. I felt victimized by food. Food was the boss of me. Advertising influenced me. You know, they, they put the luscious pictures and, you know, video of, you know, beautiful things up there for a reason. It's because of it's like Pavlovian response. I'm going to go out in the car and get one right now. When you have restaurant chains saying, Come to us for your cheat day. Or, you know, you've had a hard day. Break out the ice cream. Really, is the ice cream going to help the day? And is a cheat meal, so-called cheat meal, going to help anything? I felt like I was a loser. I'm an, I'm an intelligent, educated gregarious person and I was I felt trapped in my body for one thing and I felt trapped but what by what I perceived as my weakness of nature to get a control of it part of it was physiological when I was a sugar burner our brain tells us to keep on burning sugar it's a sad fact I'd given up on losing weight I didn't want to take insulin for type 2 diabetes I've been diagnosed and treated for cancer three times in my life over the course of you know, 20, 15, 15, 20, 15, 15 years. Once while I was pregnant. But I could not stand the idea of taking insulin for type 2 diabetes. So I Googled how to not take insulin for type 2 diabetes. I came across the white coat video of Dr. Eric Westman from Duke University, who's now a pal of mine. By the way, Tuesday will be the Durham online support group meeting with Dr. Eric Westman and me on Crowdcast, but we're at capacity. There are no seats available. Mm. Spots available. Everyone's seat will be in their own home. That's Tuesday, but you can register for the following month. Anyway, so the, the video said, keep your carbs, you know, blah, 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 blah. I said, well, I can, I can do that. So the next time I ate, I laid off the carbs. And the next time I ate after that, I laid off the carbs. It's not that I'm a magical person. I was so low. I, I needed to make a change. 
not to lose weight. I was miserable. I'd been morbidly obese for 30 years from my mid twenties to my mid fifties. So what changed? My behavior changed. My physiology didn't change. My intellect didn't change, although I feel much smarter now than I did when I was full of brain fog. My, my home life didn't change. My, you know, I live in the same house. I have the same husband. My behavior changed. I, I laid off the carbs and I quit feeling like a victim. And not long after that, I, the, the first thing I noticed before weight, my joints quit hurting. That happened quickly, within days. And I realized, oh my gosh, I actually am losing weight. And then I, then I could stand up straighter and I could breathe easier, I could sleep. I mean, it, it took three years for me to lose the 97.4 pounds. And as someone asked me, how long did it take you to lose? I said, three years. Well, that wasn't very fast. So I had asked, well, how much weight did you lose in three years? I'm a normal loser. And I was thrilled. My behavior changed. And feelings follow behavior. So as my behavior changed and my state of health changed, my feelings changed my feelings about food, my feelings about myself. I've always been comfortable in front of crowds, at parties, in talking to large groups of people, always been comfortable with that. I was not happy with myself though. And that's what has changed. So how do you stay on the wagon? By making the decision, making the choice to continue with the behavior that you've been doing for the last nine days. So the a little suggestion I made to this person on the, when the question was posed on Patreon. Okay, so if it's 10 days that, that trips you up, come up with something, a visual, that just gets you to day 11. Whether it's getting a calendar and putting sticky faces on it, you know, happy faces. And okay, done, one, two, four, five, seven, seven, eight, 11, yay. Or, you know, getting a, a jar with marbles and you move every day, you move a, a, a marble to the jar from, you know, here's where I'm starting and here's where I want to get day 11. I have a patron in Germany, Kimmy, who did strings of beads. Every day she was perfectly keto, as she says. She, she would put another bead or pearl on the string and if she went off, she had to take all the beads off. It's not like she skipped a bead. She had to take them all off and start over. She got this huge long string of, of beads. Find something. Get the, get the monkey off your back. Uh, check in with a friend. Okay, it's, it's day seven. I'm hanging in there. <sighs> Wish me good luck. Okay, it's day 10. I just need to make it past midnight and so I don't turn into a pumpkin. Whatever it is. Find a tool. And then once you string 11 days, do it again. And then you'll look back and you'll say, wow, well, <laughs> I've been doing this for three months. And now I don't even have to think about it. How do you stay on the wagon is you stay on the wagon. Take a, take a ridiculous um, analogy. If someone asks you, How do I quit bouncing checks? You stop writing checks when you don't have enough money in the bank. How do I stop beating my head against a brick wall? Stop beating your head against a brick wall. How do I quit cutting school, mom? You quit cutting school. You, you keep your took us in the chair. Of course, that's a bad analogy. A lot of kids aren't in school right now. But you know what I'm saying. How do you stop doing something? By not doing it. And by not telling ourselves that we're not in control of the situation. Really, it is almost the only thing over which we have control. Is what we put in our mouths. 
or what we don't put in our mouths. Just lay off the carbs. Okay, I posted a video. Someone, I when I first got on, someone talked about the, a, a pizza video. So easy. Very yummy, and you can make all kinds of variations. I just laid off the carbs. My husband made a beautiful breakfast treat. He, he's more interested in cooking than I am. It was so good, and it was 100% keto. We just laid off the carbs. There were no biscuits. There was no toast. There were no hash browns. But man, was it good. I'm, uh, he, I asked him to do it again and let me record it and I'll post it. It was delish. So to summarize, how do you stop? How do you stay on the wagon? You stay on the wagon. And, you, and we have to stop telling ourselves that we are not in control of our actions. We are sad but true. Wouldn't it be nice if we didn't have to be held accountable for anything. But we are. We're not accountable for everything. You know, things happen that are out of our control. But unless someone is pinning you down and force feeding you ding-dongs, stop eating the ding-dongs. And if hunger is not the problem, food is not the answer. We have to quit telling ourselves that I was doing great and then life happened. Or, well, that's easy for you to say, but I get out of stress. I have the, I have the story for that, okay? I won't go into it now, but I have the story for, it, for that. I did that. It was an idiotic choice I made. Cut to the chase. I ate all that. 10 days later, I'd put on 13 pounds and I still had cancer. You know, so if hunger is not the problem, food is not the answer. It just isn't. We've all seen things. We are stronger than we know. We are stronger than a cookie or hash browns or biscuits or fries or chocolate cake or M&M's. And we certainly are strong enough to stay on the wagon. And if I can do this, you can do this. I promise. Quick quick uh, shameless commerce division with a nod to the car talk, guys. Spiral version, perfect bound version. You can get this one at Costco. Costco. <laughs> I wish. Amazon. You'll get it faster and cheaper if you do it with Amazon, if you have prime shipping. But this is, you can get it from me. It takes longer. But this is Casey's. 12 month record book with habit trackers and quotes and journals and all that stuff. I'm just trying to earn my keep around here. So, and I want to give a shout out to patrons. Hey, Trish, um, who made it possible, made it possible for me to change careers with Patreon, which is a private support group. I do, depending on your pledge level, I do 20 video snippets a month from my kitchen at patrons' suggestions. Um, I do a handful of patron-only live streams on Crowdcast a month and a handful of patron-only video group sessions on Zoom a month, which I just completed before I started this one. Is that, that's it. I think that's it. Okay, so thank you so much. Now let's look and see who's here and what they're saying. Hey, Trish. Trish is a helicopter, former helicopter pilot. I have... Um, I have flight aware up because I'm watching Ernan's flight. My husband's up in his airplane flying. Um, and I saw a couple of new uh, club members, Yolanda Stauffer and Brenda Tina Hughes. They are Baconators. Thank you so much. S. Nasa writes, hi, Casey. How are you doing? The pizza recipe was great. Thanks so much. From the eight ounce cheese base, would you make four portions so that you stay to the four ounce cheese limit of page four. Thanks so much. Well, I couldn't eat four ounces, um, but yes. And as you saw in the video, I, I took the eight ounce pizza crust, divided that in two. So now you're already at four ounces per half. And then my husband ate four of the five slices. Yeah. You just have to make sure that you, you don't overeat. Okay. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going down because y'all, I love it that y'all talk to each other. Um, hey, there's a, there's a bravocado here. 
Brenda Tina Hughes writes, can't wait for my shirt to get here. What shirt did you get? I need, I'm going to make some more shirts. Uh, on the video group session today, someone was talking about she's doing great and she started walking again. She said she'd given up on walking. And she was at work and it, she says, I got, what is that, that? it's always a lunch break. She says, I don't eat lunch. I don't eat during that break. So someone came back and said, wow, you look great and happy. And well, what did you have for lunch? She said, I had a walk for lunch. I'm going to make a t-shirt that says, I'm having a walk for lunch. So people can wear it at work. Like, you know, no, I'm not eating. I don't need to eat. It's okay. But you see the, t the labels for food things permeate every part of our lives. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks. <sighs> okay. Um, total. Okay. Kelly Sproul writes, totally unrelated, but my, my living room and dining room walls are painted the same color as your walls. <laughs> um, thank you. Thank you. I'm Kara Z writes, when I started keto, I didn't pay attention to weight loss. Now, after two years, I'm starting to obsess over it. I still have about 30 pounds to goal weight. Any suggestions? Well, I would say nip it in the bud, the obsession. You know, weight, this, the, weight the number on the scale is like number seven of important things in my book. And how did you come to the goal weight? Is it based on a chart in some doctor's office by what a magazine said you should weigh? Is it by what you weighed when you were 18 years old? Um, is it from an actuarial table or did you just make it up? No, just don't obsess over it. Just don't. If you want to lose more body fat, make sure you're not overeating dietary fat and then make sure you're not overeating just food, even if it's on page four. We lose body fat when we consume less food. Now, that's not as simple as calories in, calories out. I've been weight stable for four years. I mean, dead stable. There is a fluctuation of about 3.7 pounds going back four years. If I wanted to lose more body fat, which someone might look at me and, and think that I'm the, the before picture, if I wanted to lose more, I would need to reduce the amount of food I eat. But I'm, I don't, I'm happy. I'm very happy. I, I wear size six and petite smalls. Unbelievable. I started at 24W jeans with the spandex in them from Costco. And I needed every fiber of that spandex. Huge badunk dunk Lots of junk in my trunk. So one thing to do is adjust your expectations and don't think about 30 pounds. Take it. You can't lose. You're not going to lose 30 pounds at a time unless you have a leg lopped off. Think about it as, okay, you know what I like to do? I'd like to lose 10% more, you know, of what I have left. I'm going to lose three pounds and give yourself plenty of time to do it. And then don't eat if you're not hungry <laughs> and stop if you're satiated. Peckishness is not hunger. It's like, oh, I could eat, but I don't need to eat. Hunger is, it's time for me to eat. And we all have to figure out what that is. Oh, Trish writes, I, ju I just love my spring green 12-month record diary. I even started midweek. Okay, so I made this 12 months, go keto with Casey's 12-month record book. Journal, log, your diary of change. I specifically did not put any dates in here at all because you don't need to wait for the first of the year or next Monday or net the first of next month or after your birthday. I started on a Wednesday. It just happened to be that day and it was midday. It wasn't a first of the month and it wasn't a first of the year and it wasn't the day after my birthday. We can start anytime. Raquel's sewing journey, LOL, ding dongs, are a weakness. So we don't, we do not partake of those. Monica Olbrich, hey, Monica. Uh, thank you for doing, doing this, Casey. You're an inspiration. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Jan Lamar, 
I'm going to have to, you know, let me try to make the text bigger. Jen Lamoran writes, it's to not buy keto store products because they are expensive and they're not necessary. This is just, if this is just food, how do you start? Just eat food. Eat whatever you usually eat. Just lay off the carbs. Lay off the rice, potatoes, bread, and pasta. But you can have the chicken and the steak and the pork and the bacon. And eggs and the ham and the lamb and the fish and the seafood. Obviously, if you don't like some of those things, don't eat them. Someone wrote to me and says, I won't be able to do keto. I don't like bacon. Don't eat bacon. What am I going to do for breakfast if I don't like eggs? Have a pork chop. <laughs> you know, we, we've gotten into this framework of what we're supposed to eat and when. It's all been self, you know, it's been imposed upon us, but, but we, get, we get to choose. Hey, Shelly. Mary T writes, watch Dr. Westman interview and the interviewer said, sometimes you just have to cave and have the Oreo. Dr. Westman said, they still make Oreos? Okay, so really? What? I'm not, I want that's interesting. I did not see that interview. Let's, let's take that on a logical thing. So an interview says, sometimes you just have to cave and have the Oreos. You can hear cuckoo in the background. I know cuckoo drives some people crazy. Other people really like it. It reminds them of their grandmother's house. What is a, an Oreo? And I loved Oreos. My brother, whose type 2 diagnosis triggered me onto this whole thing. His idea of giving up, of, of cutting back on carbs is giving up Oreos for Lent. So I guess he'll be happy on Monday. What will Oreos do? What will they fix? There's zero nutritional value in them. They're not food. I, I got on a real kick a couple of weeks ago about Pringles. They're, Pringles aren't even food adjacent. They're fake, fake food. So that's kind of crazy. And that's the kind of conditioning we, we all have to battle against. And we just have to put on our Wonder Woman cuffs or our, you know, what's the Wolverine claws and battle that. Deflect it. Pew, pew, pew. No, I don't have to eat any daggum Oreos, you moron. Sorry. I don't know who the interviewer was. Do not mean to, but it's moronic. Hey, Mary Kay. Hello, Princess Ninja and Keto. Becky Bramlett. Not sure exactly what I'm doing, except trying to eat a little less and do a little more. LOL. That's, you know. Okay. I loved Oreos. My problem was. A sleeve of them, like the row was a serving. Left this point. Why would you have Oreos in the house? Why Why would you? You know, kids don't need Oreos. My house was a walking sugar factory when I was a kid. It was my mother. I was one of seven children. My mother would buy eight loaves of, of long white bread, the really square kind, at a time. Carton and carton and carton of Coca-Cola in the pony bottles, because that's how they came then. Chips Ahoy, Oreos. A meal would be a meatloaf with minute rice, canned peas, applesauce, which I like mashing all together. That's just sugar, 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 and a little bit of ground beef. Kids don't need Oreos. They don't need Chips Ahoy. They do not need Cap'n Crunch. They don't need Frosted Flakes. They certainly don't need Fruit Loops. Mona Tufan. Mona, I have to ask you a question. How, I, I know how to say marhaba in Turkish. How do you say goodbye in Turkish? Um, when I do my snippets, I try to log off with different languages. Mona writes, I simply look at the advertisements. If something has an ad, it's not a real food. No one sells spinach with advertisement, right? You know, the, yeah, we're the spinach producers. Or the lamb manufacturers. Now, there was the beef advisory. Beef, it's what's for dinner with, you know, was it Sam Shepard? Not Sam Shepard. What's his name? A great voice. Okay. Mona. Hosh, I'm going to have to look it up. Hoshkala. Hosh, Hoshkal? Hoshkal. Thank you. Uh, Mona is from 
Istanbul. Yeah, Kara, Kara Z writes, haha, sounds like my house growing up. Everybody's house growing up, right? Almost everybody's house. My, my father, who was not the cook in the house, when my mother was gone for any reason, and he, you know what he made me? He made me sandwiches on the white bread, which is sugar, with margarine, which is sugar. And then he would put sugar on it. So he'd sprinkle sugar on the margarine on the white bread. I had margarine and sugar sandwiches. It is a wonder that I survived. They were not trying to kill me. They didn't know any better. House chakal, as pronounced. House chakal. Thank you. House chakal. Marhaba. House chakal. You know, I think it's respectful to try to pronounce people's names correctly and be respectful of cultures. Now, Mona, are you going to be? Uh, observing Ramadan. And if I'm off base on that, let me know. And if you do, do you find it challenging? Because that is coming up. Yeah, Michelle writes, oh my God. Margarine and sugar sandwiches. Yep. Now my father was morbidly obese. My father had was walking metabolic syndrome. Hello from Wyndham, Ohio writes, and Taft. Um, let me see. What else can I share? I don't know. Oh, can you see my plants? See, there's just some of them. I started and I'm, I'm going to update my garden section behind the scenes on my blog. For the first time ever, I started seeds. We've had vegetable gardens before. Haven't had one in a few years, but I started seeds and these are mostly tomatoes, some cabbage, and I think a couple of sunflowers in there. I'm very excited. I need to do some more repotting today. My dad made butter sugar sandwiches as well. My father would also make raisin sandwiches where he got raisins, put them in a, through a meat grinder with some lemon juice and some sugar, and then put that on white bread. I see your beautiful eggs. Yes, we have beautiful eggs from our backyard chickens. Toby Mac Ballerina writes, I fell off the wagon, so to speak, last night and binged on almonds and cashews. Been carnivore since December. Feel so terrible, couldn't sleep. There's a reason. Thank you for sharing and for your transparency, but let's change that. You didn't fall off the wagon. You decided to eat almonds and cashews. There's a reason nuts are not on page four. They are calorically and carb dense, and they're very easy to mindlessly overeat. And I love cashews. So I'm going to suggest to you, Toby, that you, you start saying, I decided to eat them. And then if you say, and then I, and I feel terrible today, connect those two things. I decided to eat almonds and cashews and I feel terrible today. So remember that, write it down, put it somewhere, make a little video reminder for yourself. The next time you feel like eating almonds and cashews, play it for yourself, make a voice memo. Uh, Valerie Martini, Martini asks, what's with the eggs? We have backyard chickens and we've got some more over there as a bowl of them. We have 15 backyard chickens. And we eat a lot of eggs. And our sons are coming tomorrow. It's my husband's birthday tomorrow. So our sons and their families are coming. So I will be gifting some eggs to our children. Um, Daphne Garza, hola, from Spain. Rice and potatoes are the base of menu here. It's going to be tough. But okay, honey. Mi amor, yo voy a decir una cosa. Mi esposa de Colombia, South America, okay? Frijoles, arroz, papas, yuca, patacón. If he can do it, you can do it. And he never had a weight problem. He just wanted to be healthier. He saw me getting healthier. So what I said to her was, she says, you know, it's going to be hard because of the rice is the basis of everything. We would buy rice 50 pounds at a time, beans 25 pounds at a time. We would get the abuelita tortilla chips, giant ones from Costco, five at a time. My husband makes delicious salsa. And he just, and I used to, even after I was doing this, I would grind wheat berries to make homemade wheat bread. And we smelled delicious. I made it every week. And he said, you know, stop. He never, he just said, stop, don't make any more bread. What? And don't buy any more rice and don't buy any more beans. Every culture thinks that they're the culture where carbs are the base. Every culture, carbs are the base, except for the Inuits, 
and the Maasai. Okay? Italy, South America, Central America, Germany, England, Italy, France, Spain. Everywhere carbs are the base. People say, well, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm an Italian from New Jersey. Well, I'm from the South, honey, and we have entire chains of restaurants dedicated to the biscuit. And they're all huge, and everything's deep fried, including Twinkies. You can get deep fried Twinkies at the North Carolina State Fair. You can get deep fried pickles. Every culture thinks they're the one that's carb-centric, because they all are. But that doesn't mean we need to stay that way. Let me see. Oh, my husband landed. Yay! But you can do this, um, Daphne. If my husband can do it, like I said, he never had to give up food because he was never had a weight or a health issue. He just, it made sense to him because he was hearing the same lectures I was hearing. Because he, he heard them in the background because I was listening to them and he heard them. Michelle Hughes writes, our backyard chickens come in April. Yay, hoping our veggies survive the freeze. We have not planted yet. I won't put anything outside until uh, after um, the end of April. Mona Tufan, I can't fast this year because I have a serious migraine. Oh, but Ramadan is a set of rituals, not only fast. Very good. So it's not food centric, which is nice. Monica Olbrich writes, yep, German hair, bread and potatoes. Name a culture that's not. Name one. Asians, rice. And dumplings. Uh, Mary E. Fox Gr Grimm writes, Thanks, Casey. Healthier and happier because of you and Dr. Westman. Challenge my di my dietitian wants me to do net carbs. No. Well, does your dietitian live with you? Dietitians will be the last brick to fall. Because they actually paid for their education to teach them the wrong thing. Medical doctors didn't get any nutrition. Oh, Trish writes, um, education. Nutrition education. They got nutrition or else they wouldn't have survived medical school. Trish writes, happy birthday to lovely mate. Yes, my lovely mate. I'm stretching. Something I could not do. I could not pick my foot up like this. I like to stretch like that. You're kidding me? I could not do that before. I, could, I couldn't cross my legs before. Karen Komoski writes, I love my coffee with a dash of heavy cream, but I think the dairy is causing adult acne. Any suggestions for coffee creamer? Miss my coffee mate. I would go back with a coffee mate. Don't, you know, you put, are you drinking, you know, giant things of coffee like this? When I'm traveling, I use coffee mate. I don't worry about it. Um, Kelly Sproul writes, you're, you're from North Carolina? I am. Michelle writes, I started last month with a blood sugar of 377 while taking metformin. Two weeks in, my blood sugar is 120. Michelle, are you signed up for the Durham support group meeting with Dr. Westman and me on Tuesday? He loves stories like this. If you, if you aren't, try to get the next one. It's free. It's free. You can just show up and talk with Dr. Westman and me. Dr. Westman, mostly. Um... Just say no to the net carbs. Total BS. Net carbs, it's not a magical thing. It just means more carbs. If you can tolerate more carbs, fantastic. I cannot. I'm below the 20 carbs every single day. I'm from Southport, North Carolina, but live out west now. And uh, Shell writes, wowzers. I'm sure that's in response to the blood sugar. All right, my friends. I'm going to sign off. Get ready for the rest of my day. Thank you for allowing me to be part of this. And to remind you, you can do this. Our actions are in our control. Lots of other things aren't. But we can control. If you decide you're going to have a death by chocolate dessert, it's your choice. It's not that someone forced you. It's not that you had a bad day. You decided to do it. Fine. No judgment. If you feel like crud the next day, then maybe you won't do that again. But keep your carbs, 20 grams or fewer a day. Total not net. If it's not on page four, link below. Don't eat it. Don't eat if you're not hungry. Stop when you're satiated. Do a girl, a sister, or a friend and buy a green book. And you can get t-shirts and stuff from my Teespring shop. Like I said, I'm just trying to earn my keep. My former career was very lucrative. But I like doing this better. Okie dokie. 
Denise, hey, Denise Martinez, hola, uh, tú y Carlos. And take it easy. And there goes grandmother clock. That's 45 minutes. This was a long one. Okay. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye.